When you go to New Zealand on holiday, Air New Zealand really looks after you, as though you were royalty, in fact. They wine you and dine you and wait on you hand and foot. You have all the excitement of going overseas, all the glamour of going abroad, and yet New Zealand is only the Tasman, two and a half hours and a five-course meal away. Hours saved in travelling means more time for doing. And there's a lot more to do in New Zealand nowadays. Mum and Dad can still relax and look at the marvellous scenery, but now the younger generation is discovering that there's a lively, new, sophisticated, swinging New Zealand just across the way. A more go-ahead New Zealand. We've prepared this film especially for you, our Australian neighbours, to show you that there's now a livelier approach to tourism in New Zealand, and especially for those seeking the new, upbeat, action-filled New Zealand scene, and who want to know where it's all happening. It starts happening when you arrive at any of the three international airports, the three major points of entry, Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch. For convenience, we'll start in the north at Auckland, but tourists can come in anywhere and go out anywhere. The old's rapidly giving way to the new in New Zealand. New buildings are mushrooming everywhere. The economy is loosening up. There's a feeling of confidence in the air. In short, there's a boom on. And right in the middle of it is the tourist industry, especially the accommodation and entertainment side of it. In Auckland alone, for example, holiday accommodation has exploded, but everywhere the hotel and motel accommodation is increasing. Getting around is no problem if you're the do-it-yourself kind. Rental car firms will bring your car right to where you want it and collect it from wherever you like to leave it. Or if you like companions, join a trouble-free coach tour. Take off over the Auckland Harbour Bridge, for instance, for a fast run up to Northland, to Waitangi and the Bay of Islands. Only a few hours and you can be in Mediterranean blue seas under tropically blue skies. Everyone's heard of New Zealand's big game fishing, marlin and swordfish for example. You can go out and fish for big game during the day and at night fish for compliments in the lively hospitality of the Waitangi Hotel. Togetherness, spirits are high and flowing freely. We tossed out six o'clock closing and loosened up the drinking laws ages ago. People spend time having fun in the evenings, but they want to save time when traveling during the day. So we'll fly south to the Rotorua area. Now, with National Airways sleek, comfortable new jets, most places are only a short jet hop away. The Air Safari is a new kind of concept in tourist travel. You do more, see more, and enjoy more with the time and energy you save flying. You can stay longer in exciting regions and pick up all the highlights. Instead of rushing from place to place, you can relax and live out of drawers instead of suitcases. You get a chance to unpack, and there's more time to really see and do things. And of course, time in the air provides an excitement all its own. The thermal area that extends from offshore White Island into the North Island at Rotorua is really something. Waimangu, the frying pan lake, the biggest boiling lake in the world. But 
everyone's heard of Rotorua. It's mud pools, it's geysers. No, geysers. That's dependable old Pahutu letting off steam again. But the geothermal bores at Wairaki are just as intriguing, even if they have been tamed. Of course, Rotorua is rich in associations with Māori art and culture. You'll enjoy the attraction of Rotorua's thermal area and its Māori people. it's just dressing up for tourists. No one wears grass skirts all the time anymore. Almost bang in the centre of the North Island is Lake Taupo. Anyone can fish for trout all year round. No need to be an expert either. No less than 500 tonnes of trout come out of Taupo each year. Actually, there's a vast variety of fishing in New Zealand. 4,000 miles of coastline for surf casting and line fishing. Groper, snapper, kawai, salmon, to name only a few. We've got more fish than sheep, and we've got well over 60 million of them. A little bit further south of Taupo is Tongariro National Park. Fish in the morning and ski in the afternoon if you want. The Chateau Tongariro at the foot of Ruapehu specializes in comfort and there's no effort involved in getting up to the slopes. Getting down is pretty easy too. Christchurch in the South Island and contrast again. New Zealand contains more contrast in its 100,000 square miles than all of Australia's millions. Christchurch is a good hopping off place for a jaunt around the South Island. You glide off over the lush, fertile Canterbury Plains and head into the Southern Alps, the big alpine backbone that runs down the South Island. Half an hour and you're over on the west coast at the Franz Josef Hotel. The Tourist Hotel Corporation has 13 major hotels strategically scattered at tourist spots all over the country. It makes a point of putting its hotels right where they'll do the most good, right where you want to relax after a day inspecting the great wild outdoors. half an hour south from Christchurch and you're flying down the Tasman Glacier.
Coming up is Cinerama Gap. Sorry we can give it to you only in small screen, but at least it's in colour. The Alps may look pretty rugged. Well, they are. But again, there's always a tourist hotel tucked away somewhere. Somewhere? Ah, yes, there it is, in this case, the Hermitage. Planes take off near the Hermitage and land right on the Tasman Glacier itself. A lot of people, most visitors in fact, come to ski rather than ski. Though you might like to know if you are a skier, but here you can ski all year round and the whole Tasman Glacier gives you some pretty spectacular downhill runs. Now there's a good run for your money. And when you've had a day of fooling around on the snow below Mount Cook, which at 12,000 feet is of course New Zealand's highest mountain, you can always, well, relax. And as the sun sinks slowly in the west, meanwhile at the Hermitage... We keep harping on it, we know, but in New Zealand only half an hour or so by air and you can be in the most contrasting surroundings imaginable. A few moments by air and you're in the Queenstown area. Contrast. Contrast in things to see, contrast in places to go, and especially contrast in things to do. Lively things to do. Jet boating on the Shotover River, for instance. Just around the corner is swinging Queenstown. Glide your way one and a half thousand feet above the town by gondola. Lake Wakatipu basks in the sun and so do the tourists. Later, watch the sun go down behind the Remarkables while dining and whining before dancing at the Skyline restaurant. From Queenstown, the whole southern lakes area and on the coast, Fiordland open up. Wanaka, Tianao, Manapuri. No need to rough it like pioneers though. There's plenty of good accommodation all through the area. The thousands of acres of bush and snow-clad peaks roll majestically past you as you head towards the best-known feature of them all, Mitre Peak, guarding Milford Sound. Nearby, the Sutherland Falls plunge 1,900 feet from Lake Quill. 2,000 feet above sea level. Bowen Falls, just a baby at 500 feet. Again, right out in the middle of the great rugged outdoors, the Tourist Hotel Corporation is right there. The Milford Hotel, right at the head of the south. Do give yourself time, at least 10 days, and more if you can, to see the best of both islands. Whether you're young or not so young, New Zealand welcomes you to an interest-packed holiday. So... Come on, come on.